Hey guys, Spitwise Guy here. Um, luckily, I had a bit of time spare today, <clears throat> so I thought I'd put out a couple of tutorials uh, instead of the normal once weekly. So you'll be getting a double up today, but don't expect this to be the norm. Um, but I will try and do double ups if I get the time. So as promised, in this tutorial, we're going to be going through um, functions in Rust and how they work. So as always, go ahead and scaffold your projects. We're going to say cargo new uh, learn functions. And we'll see it into here, learn functions. Alrighty, so as always, we'll say touch um, source slash rust, sorry, whoops, main dot rs. And then we'll say nano source main.rs <clears throat> alright so first thing is go ahead and declare our main function as always just like this okay so for those of you who are new to programming um, and I probably am not the best person to introduce you to programming uh, as I kinda of move too quickly for that but uh, just a quick explanation a function is simply a routine or a block of code that completes a a function that's probably bad it compl it completes something right it executes a bunch of code now often you'll have a function for the purpose of completing a set of code and getting the result back that is not always true as some functions can have no return often those functions are Functions that mutate things, uh, change things in the program, complete an action, um, and they're dependent. They're dependentless functions, basically. Nothing actually uses those functions to get a result. So, let's go ahead and we're going to declare another basic function here. We're going to say fn my underscore func just like this. So we're going to be going through a few functions and how they work. So just as a test, we're just going to say my underscore func. Oops. All right. And we'll just quickly uh, close this and we'll say cargo run build it. Make sure we've got no errors in our code, which we don't. All right. Go ahead and reopen that in nano or whatever your text editor might be. Um, and so we'll just say print line hello from another function <laughs> alright go ahead and save that close and we'll say cargo run and as you can see we've got output here that says hello from another function uh, in fact I'll just probably make this full screen for you guys that's probably a lot easier um, so Finally, all right, so what we'll do is we'll open up our project back up in Nano, uh, and we'll do some um, more complicated stuff with our um, function, sorry. Um, so let's just say, for example, we have a variable. We'll say let mute x equal to 17. And we'll say print ln x is equal to like this and we'll say x all right now let's go ahead and save this so if you remember from the last tutorial uh, when we went through variables this will simply output um, x equals 17 so go back into nano and Let's just say that we wanted to do a few calculations or whatever. Um, but we wanted to basically use a function to assign to x. So what we can do here is we can say this. We'll say this function returns an int 32. Now what we'll do is we will simply remove this um, from our function and we will say let x equal to 9 whoops 
two, two wrong things done there at the same time, and we'll say x. Now, the one thing with functions in Rust is this. <clears throat> A return in Rust is simply the last thing in the function without a semicolon at the end. Now, the design philosophy behind it is this. Since Rust doesn't have a return keyword that says, hey, I'm returning from the function here, and uh, I am passing back my results to the caller, Rust has an ideology of the fact that if it doesn't end, if the, if the statement doesn't close, then the caller must continue on from where it left off. And so, essentially, what you're doing here in Rust is you're grabbing the you're grabbing the contents of that function wherever it doesn't close, if you think about it, and then we're we're basically passing that all back to the caller. <clears throat> so, up here, we'll say x is equal to my underscore func like this and then we'll say print ln x is equal to that like normal and we'll say x and we'll go ahead and we'll save this and exit and we'll say cargo run now, as you can see, we've got the same result. However, one of those variable declarations used a straight x equals 17, and the next one called a Rust function. Okay. So, finally, let's do one more function. Now, functions in Rust, as if as all other programming programming languages can take <clears throat> parameters to work with. So we'll say fn calc <clears throat> x i 32 y i oops y i 32 so both our parameters are in 32s and we'll say the return type is int 32 and we'll say okay we'll say let result equal to x times y and we'll say result. So, in this function, we've said multiply x and y, which are the parameters that come into the function, and assign them to result. Then return result at the completion of the function. So, up here, we'll say x is equal to calc. <clears throat> and we'll say 100 times 100. Just like that, and then we'll say, and that's capital X, so that won't compile, and we'll say print line x is equal to, with our little quote marks, just like that, and we'll say the parameter is x, and we will close that, close that, and I'll clear the console quickly, and we'll say cargo run. Now, as you can see, we've got 17, 9, and 10,000. Alright, so thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you liked that video. Um, rate, subscribe, comment. If you've got any other questions, let me know. Um, the next tutorial will be probably coming out within a week or two. Um, but, yeah, just remember, functions in Rust aren't too different from other languages, just their behavior and their returns uh, and the way you declare them. The syntax is a little bit different, but the concept is exactly the same. So I hope this helps and yeah, 